All right, welcome back everybody to another edition of Top 10 Toys. I actually wasn't planning on doing one this week because it was Christmas and I didn't think I would have time, but my wife convinced me that I kind of needed to do one with, you know, Wonder Woman dropping on uh, HBO Max streaming as well as in theaters this weekend. So I figured I can pull together something really quick and just look at some good, uh, pretty cool Wonder Woman toys. Yeah, my wife got this also for Christmas for herself, this weird little board. She was playing around, so she did this up real fast for me. So let's put that away because we don't need that anymore. And let's get right into this list. So again, it's going to be a quick little video. I'm just going to cover 10 different Wonder Woman related toys. Uh, some will be Wonder Woman herself and some will be some, again, ancillary characters that uh, may or may not be a part of Wonder Woman 1984. I still haven't had time to watch the movie yet. This I'm filming this on uh, December 26th. I'm going to try to shoot for it on Sunday afternoon, maybe, or uh, Sunday night to uh, finally catch that movie. So going into this without any knowledge of what occurs in that movie, apart from what I've seen in the trailers, I'm just throwing out again. Ten Wonder Woman toys that uh, are selling all pretty well, as well as things I just think are pretty cool. So just please make sure you like and subscribe to both channels, both my personal channel as well as Tales from the Flip Side, where this video will be housed, you know, and uh, hopefully you like what you're seeing. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to uh, throw them into the comments section, and I will take it under advisement. This entire topic came through as a suggestion, so I am always open to taking suggestions. While I have a list of things I want to cover, I'm always open to take uh, something that might be topical or something that, you know, you guys out there just want to see uh, as a subject. So, again, throw them at me. And uh, without further ado, let's just get right into this list because uh, we got a few things to look at here. So at number 10, we're just going to come right into it with uh, with Super Friends. There's this DC Direct Super Friends set. Now, this is based off the Super Friends animated series, and it's a two-pack combo pack that has both Wonder Woman and Cheetah. How could it fit more perfectly than right now with the movie out? Uh, granted, the Cheetah here is more of the classic look with a more looks like... A costume more than an actual cheetah lady, but you know, it is what it is. Super Friends was uh, one of my cartoons growing up, so uh, I'm happy to find this onto this list. Now, this comes in at number 10 because it's only averaging about $105 or so, uh, with a high of about $130. Uh, for sales, from what I could find, there's actually none up right now, so whatever was out there is already sold. Maybe some more come to market in the next few days uh, with the popularity of the movie, but I can't say that for certain. So, right now, it's barren, but it's about 105 bucks, 106 bucks uh, to pick one of these up right now. So to move that on then to number nine, this is one I've kind of mentioned before and covered a little bit last week, and this is the Superpowers Collection. And sticking with that same time frame, this Wonder Woman from the Superpowers Collection, while she didn't make the top 10 of all of the Superpowers, she makes the top 10 of her own list. So this one's about 115 bucks or so. 114 thereabouts, and there was a high of 270 for an unpunched card. Uh, that's where they actually didn't uh, put the hanger, the hanger hole, all, all the way through. So this isn't something that's easy to find still in the box. So it's going to get you, you know, over 100 bucks easily you know, on their own as well. But if you're looking right now uh, for one of these, you can get one anywhere from like 70 bucks to about 250, uh, depending on condition and just sellers. I know there's different variations. There's also a short card or like a slim card version where it's a, a bit thinner doesn't have all the whole full card with it so that's also kind of cool they seem in wonder woman's case to sell for a little bit cheaper than the regular don't know why most of the other superpowers it's you know kind of a one for one you don't really see much of a difference but from what i saw here in uh, some of the sales data from the last three months uh the slim cards are uh, a little bit cheaper than the uh the full size cards so yeah take that for what you want so moving this on then down to uh, number eight. Number eight, we have the Mego comic action Wonder Woman. Now, the comic action is this tiny little figure. It's squat looking. People sometimes confuse this with the uh, Pocket Heroes, which was uh, a line that Mego did a little bit later. But uh, their first run at this, they did these uh, comic action heroes. And uh, some of these, this is a Wonder Woman you can see. It's just her by herself. But they did do a three-pack version as well. Uh, where you can find, I think she was with Penguin and somebody else uh, in that same pack. But uh, again, not the most detailed of figures. I had a few of these uh, when I was growing up. They're, they're, yeah, they're very small. They're, they're not very posable. They're very, you know, the, the plastic isn't the best. Not a lot of detail in the faces or even the, you know, the paint schemes. So uh, it, it was, it is what it is. But it's still a pretty neat little figure, especially if you can find one on the card. But uh, that's not going to be an easy task. So this is about 125 bucks uh, right now. High of about 165. Currently, you could find them listed for about 150 to about 290 in the package. So again, 
something like this still being in a package is, is a, a pretty tall order because this I think was early to you know early to mid seventies uh, that these Mego little comic action heroes uh, you know came out. So with that said, let's keep it moving. Let's go to number seven. Now this number seven is uh, an interesting one to me because you have to kind of look it up a little bit uh, strangely. Now this is the DC Universe Classics figure of Cheetah, but there's three versions of her, and this would be the uh, the way they list it is either naked or nude. Not that she's naked, but she just doesn't have an outfit on. She, she's a full-on cheetah person, so she's just not wearing an outfit on top of that. So you have to search. Just be careful if you Google it, because there's a lot of weird stuff that might come up if you do that. But if you look, there's this version here, which is by far and away much more expensive than the uh, regular version, which has her in like a still cheetah form, but with like a black suit. And then there's another that kind of harkens back to that uh, suit where she just has the cat ears on there, like the... Uh, number 10 installment from the uh, Super Friends cartoon. So there are two other versions, but it's this version here where it's just full on Cheetah, no costume whatsoever. That's the one that uh, hits the list. And it's about 182 averaging. And that's just with the one sale that I could find in the last three months. But the current listings for this thing are between four and $550. So even though this one sold at 182.50 right now, if you want to get one of these in the package, you're looking to spend at least 400 bucks. So it ain't cheap but it only hits number seven because that one sale is where it is. So until those other ones sell, this one may move up the list if I were to do this later, but as of right now, it's number seven. So moving on, we're gonna roll right into number six and kind of sticking with, not sticking with, but going back to Mego, these are the larger full size, the cloth clothes versions. I wanna say they're like eight to 12 inches tall. I don't remember exactly. I had a bunch when I was younger. I don't believe I had Steve Trevor, but Steve Trevor here is our number six installment. Comes in with this little white flight suit kind of thing. He's got this little, uh, you know, brown cap that comes with him as well. Yeah, it's just not an easy figure to find, especially in the case. So he's averaging about $240, and I think it was like four sales that I found over the last couple of months, with the high hitting about 400 bucks. So Steve Trevor, who, I mean, yes, he doesn't look like Chris Pine here, but... This was based off of the Linda Carter you know, series. That first series for Wonder Woman with the Migos had Linda Carter front and center on the card package. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But they had to take her off after this uh, first run of them. So this Steve Trevor figure here again, it's hitting at number six. And uh, the ask right now, there's one up, I think. And it's uh, 406 bucks. So if you're looking for one in the package, that's what it's going to run you. So it's hitting the higher end. I don't know if it's just because the movie's hitting and right out right now, but right now, the asks are much higher than uh, most of the sales that I've seen over the last couple of months. But isn't that always the case with things? Uh, so with that, let's keep it rolling and hit the top five. So at number five, we're sticking with the Mego, but this is, again, as I noted, not the Leonard Carter version, but the next series that came after it. I don't know if it was the next year exactly, but it's definitely the next release version where they kind of take it, took Linda Carter's picture off of the packaging. And uh, this is just uh, the new flyaway action version of, uh, of Wonder Woman. Her Even her outfit doesn't exactly match. I don't know if it's because they lost the rights or if there's something to do with that, but the outfit itself doesn't match the previous outfit uh, for Hermigo. You can see this one has shoulder straps on it. It's, the design's just a little bit different and no Linda Carter on the package. Still, this is not easy to find. So this one is moving at about $255 on the average, and uh, the high sale was uh, just under 300 bucks. Right now, though, if you want one, again, the asking prices are a little over 300 bucks to up to $575 for this particular version, This uh, the non-Linda Carter yeah, later release version. Again, still in the box. These Migos are not easy to, uh, you know, to track down, at least not that I can see. And also be very careful because there are uh, some re-releases that have come out. Not that I think anybody will really try to pass the re-releases off as the originals because the boxes aren't, you know, one for one or even the same. But just be careful out there because a lot of things come through with, you know, 30 year uh, anniversary releases and, and what have you. Just be careful, you know, when you're out there buying, even the loose, because some of these things you might not be able to tell right off the bat what is original and what's not. So be careful. That's why I'm sticking just with the box stuff and uh, carded for the most part. Uh, some of this box stuff, they might have been opened and then placed back into the box. Some of these sales, I didn't go through with a fine tooth comb to make sure these were all, uh, you know, NRFM, which I just recently learned means never removed from box, but it is what it is. I try to get as much sales that as I could for you guys. So moving it on without getting on that little uh, sidetrack, let's go on to number four. And number four, we have the Hot Toys version of uh, Wonder Woman. And this was from the Batman versus Superman uh, movie. And this is just a gorgeous figure. Like it is, it's almost like a statue more than it is an action figure. 
but it is gorgeous. Uh, I, I wish I could get one of these, but this this was not cheap to begin with. So the fact that it hits the list at number four because it's averaging just under three hundred bucks at about two hundred ninety six bucks, uh, that is impressive. But it was about two hundred thirty five bucks to begin with. So it's not a lot of appreciation and value because again, these things are expensive to start, but you get a lot for your money if you're really into this level of detail with the hair and just the the, the face mold is just perfect. It is a perfect representation of, you know, of Wonder Woman here. The box is kind of cool, uh, but you don't really get to see anything inside. So it's kind of like a, almost like a slip case kind of like cover. So you don't get to see everything inside. But when you look inside, there's extra hands, fists, weapons, all kinds of extra little uh, goodies for you, which also, if you wanted to sell, could, you know, you could get uh, decent money just for little pieces because that's what some people are looking for. They're just looking for pieces they might have lost or just duplicates and things that they want to do in their own, uh, you know, with their own figures just to kind of customize them as much as they can. So with number three, we're going back to that Mego series again. I know you might get tired of hearing about Migos, but I love them and uh, they're expensive. What can I tell you? So they're populating this list, especially with Wonder Woman. So we're going back to her here. And this is the Linda Carter version. This is the first release version of uh, Wonder Woman where you can see Linda Carter on the box and you've got the Diana Prince. Yeah, you know, she's got the little, uh, the, the closer to the representation of her uh, costume from like the show. Even you don't see those thick shoulder straps as you might've noticed on that, uh, the next release, as you can see. Wonder Woman, there is no shoulder straps. It's I don't know what they call it. I, I'm not a, a fashion guru, so uh, I don't know what the, you would call that type of a top, but you can see it's closer to what she wore on the show. So this one here, hitting at number three, is uh, averaging about $420 uh, to sale you know, in the box with a high of about $535. Right now, there's none up for sale of this version. Uh, I guess you know people must have cleaned it out you know, of all the entire stock with, uh, I guess, again, excitement over Wonder Woman. So we're going to do one more Mego, and uh, this one's hitting the list number two because of uh, prices. I didn't, didn't even know this one actually existed. I didn't know they made a figure of Nubia back then, but they did. And this Nubia figure is not easy to find. Uh, she hits the list because she's averaging about $427 uh, in the package with a high of about $540. So it's pretty close to the Linda Carter one, but it's still a nice, uh, it, it's not as easy to find. Yeah, you know, there were five sales that I found over the last three months. But right now, if you're looking for one of these, they're uh, listed, I think, at five fifty to six hundred bucks for uh, for the Nubia figure. It is pretty cool. Like you can see, it's got the, all all that armor on. You got the sword. You got the shield. It's a pretty cool figure. Again, I'd never seen one. I didn't even know it existed. But I, even though I was a collector, I was a kid who played with toys, and uh, I just didn't have that one. So I didn't know it existed. Now I do, and I kind of want one, but I can't pay that price. So take that for what it is. So that leaves us with one more. Number one. Number one is the uh, DC Total Heroes Wonder Woman. Now, this one is a surprise to me because I didn't even know that there was this line and why this line is so expensive, but it is. I mean, you can see the Jim Lee art on the cover here. It's that silver look. So this comes kind of closer to this uh, revamp here in the late 2010s, the teens. And... Uh, yeah, this looks almost like the New 52, I guess, uh, version of uh, Wonder Woman, more with the silver rather than the gold uh, for the you know, for the metal that she's wearing. Uh, but this figure, only one sale over the last three months, and it's about 500 bucks. Only one sale. Right now, there's a few up, but they're still asking four to $500. So that was not an outlier sale. This is just an expensive, hard-to-find piece. And again, one I didn't really know... it. <sighs> Heck, I, heck, my son even might have one tucked away here. I mean, it is a pretty cool figure, but it's not the the best mold in the world. It's not bad, but I don't know what is makes this worth what it's worth, apart from, I guess, rarity. Uh, the collectors want to collect everything. So that could be my only guess of why this figure is so desired over the rest and hitting those uh, high, high prices. So that's our number one, about 500 bucks for Wonder Woman. And a figure that I don't even think is that old, 10 years or so. Not too bad. So stick around for a second. We're going to hit up the honorable mentions because I only got a couple. Just a few things. I just kind of wanted to hit a couple things that almost made the list. And then this first one here is just one that I remembered. And I just wanted to take a look to see what it was doing. And this is the Toy Biz version of uh, you know the DC superheroes. And it's they kind of did almost 
not re quite a remold, but close to a remold of those superpowers figures. Yeah, so they were a little bulkier. But you can see they had the gold. This started with uh, Batman 89 because the Batman 89 uh, release of toys all had that gold packaging and they released Batman. And then from there, they expanded and gave a Superman and Wonder Woman, all these other uh, DC heroes as well, following, uh, you know, the popularity of the Batman movie in 1989. So this Wonder Woman, you can see she came with a little string lasso as opposed to some of the, uh, the stiffer plastic ones that uh, came with earlier releases. But this thing's pretty cheap. Uh, this is not that hard to find. There were a ton of sales. I saw 25 sales uh, of this over the last three months that I could quickly find. And it's, they, they average only about 22 bucks. So this is not a pricey figure. This is something that was mass produced. It's not hard to find. It's, again, very similar to that superpowers. I believe it even has the same superpower action motion of her, you know, moving her arm with the lasso. But there was a high of 44 bucks. And if you want one, like I said, it's like 25 to 50 bucks. You can find one in the package if that's what you're looking for. Not hard to find at all. Again, not the greatest mold in the world, but it's uh, yeah, better than some, but not better than a lot of uh, the pricier ones, you know, unfortunately. So that's my first honorable mention, because again, I just wanted to mention it because it's something that I remembered and uh, just wanted to take a look to see what it was doing. So my next honorable mention goes back to that uh, comic action heroes figure that sometimes gets confused with the pocket heroes. And this is the pocket superheroes version, which came with a little bit of a remold in, uh, you know, I think a couple of years later, where the figures were more the straight up and down. They almost look like the Kenner um, Star Wars type figures with that uh, kind of, I don't want to say pose, but more of the straight up and down uh, standing pose as opposed to that squat, almost uh, Masters of the Universe type pose they had in the early, early ones. Not that, you know, Masters of the Universe were much, much bigger, but just that kind of squat action that uh, is much different than uh, this straight up and down standing pose. Again, the mold's still not the best. Uh, the paint jobs aren't that great. Very, very basic. They're tiny figures. They're, again, about Star Wars size. So I had a bunch of these little guys, too. Uh, they weren't great, but they're still fun to play with. You know, this, you, you did what you had to with the uh, toys in the 70s and the early 80s because they weren't quite what, you know, what kids have today. Spoiled. Spoiled kids today. But that pocket, you know, pocket superheroes one almost made the list. It was about a hundred bucks, you know, hundred bucks in the package. And uh, right now you can find one for 95 bucks. I think it's listed. So yeah, just, just missed out on the list. Cause that uh, two pack was 105. So could have easily snuck in there. So that just leaves me with one more. And uh, this is another Mego, just like that pocket heroes was, but this is uh, the flex and be the bend and flex. I'm sorry. The bend and flex series. These were little rubber, Figures that you can kind of pose in any, well, not any way, but you can try to pose in any way that you wanted. Uh, I had a few of these too. These weren't great, but again, these were the toys that we had. Uh, you can see here that the mold's not the best. That kind of looks like a, almost like a weird gummy candy. And that's kind of what it is. Even if you look at the back, you can see the, what allowed them to do some of the bending is these little air hole pockets that gave you some pivot points to uh, bend the, the, I think there was like a little wire frame inside that tried to hold the pose, but they never held anything, nor could you really move the uh, the rubber bend and flex figure all that much. But yeah, they tried. They were trying to do something new and it was interesting. And uh, one of these in the package is about 105 bucks. So just slightly more than the Pocket Heroes version. Uh, there's none up for sale right now in the package, but actually that was loose because I couldn't find any uh, in the package sales. I'm sorry, same for that uh, other Pocket Heroes at least. Those were both loose sales figures. So the Pocket Figures, I'm sorry, was 100 bucks for a loose figure, and a loose one's available for 95. This uh, Flex and Bend or Bend and Flex figure, also loose, 106 bucks sales, none up for sale right now for the Wonder Woman one. Uh, but as you can see on the packaging, they had a, a Batgirl version, a Supergirl, and a Catwoman one as well, if you're, if you're looking. But this is a Wonder Woman list, so that's what we're looking for, and that's what we got. So that's it. That's my Wonder Woman list. Uh, hopefully that uh, was enjoyable for you. I just kind of threw this together really quickly. Hopefully you enjoy it, and uh, I'll see what we're going to do next week. And uh, please, again, like and subscribe to my channel, as well as Tales from the Flip Side. Feel free to comment whether what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see, what you think I could do better. Uh, I got tough skin. I could take it. So hopefully you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time.